Ah, you came back. Welcome. Let's continue. The Rune Priest is the next one. Now, this is a divine power source character, and it is one of the, uh, in my personal opinion, coolest divine powers. What they are, are an order of priests that, like the name implies, deal with runes. However, these runes are like the le like the early level ones are like the least form of runes that the gods use in creating the world. It's what the what mortals can really handle without obliterating their minds. So you begin to harness that type of power. So you know right off the bat you've got this awesome power at your hand, which I think is super super cool. They've got some of the they got one of the coolest daily tree attack power daily attack power trees. And there's seven of them, and spread out all throughout the levels. And they are the seven seals of the Gate of Death. And each one gets more and more just awesome. I mean, no, they're not the most powerful, but they have the coolest flavor with them. So when I, when I play one, I always go for that treat just because I really, really like them. They may not be the best, but they are so cool. They got some pretty good healing, too. The big thing about these guys, though, is not the abilities. For them, the big thing is role-playing that awesome power that you have. This, you know, cl closeness to the gods that no one else has. No cleric, no devote invoker can get. It's, it's just very, very unique. The uh, Rune Priest Paragon paths are the Hammer of Vengeance, the Lightbringer, Master of the Forge, and Rune Shield. All of them are pretty cool. None of them, once again, stick out too much. We move on to the Seeker, which is a primal controller, but the controller is more uh, arrowy, very, you know, artillery based in the sense of long range, uh, just uh, long range arrow shots that break up into bigger AOE blasts. So it's pretty cool. Um, they can also dual wield a little bit. Not the greatest at it though. I think if you're gonna play one, you might as well. You should just play one with a bow. You'll have the most, the best run of things. You know they're not too special, and to me personally, they come across as just a ranger, a ranger with some extra flair to it. We get the uh, Crimson Hunter Paragon Path, the Death Arrow, which is not nearly as. Um, it's just not nearly as awesome as previous issues. That's something that pisses me off about this game is the death system. But I think it's too easy to not die. And then it's way too easy to come back. But one of the things that... Uh, let's see in the classes, by the way. One of the big things about uh, the PHP 3 that they introduced was the hybrid character idea. Which allows you... It, goes, it harkens back to the uh, second edition idea of dual class. Now, well, I can't remember what the Dimming Humans had. I can't remember if it was dual classic or multi-classing. But you get to pick. It's, it's broken up, each one showing um, like the parts that you take from each class. And you, you take these parts, and there's rules for it, and you mix them together. So you could be a warrior and a wizard at the same time. So you have access to everything on both sides. You're not a great fighter anymore. You're not as devoted, but you're also not a great wizard anymore. However, you are a fighter with this like with the ability to cast like fireballs if you want. So it's, it, I think it's a really cool idea. Um, and it's got you know up PHP one, two, three, and every book that was released by the time this one was released has rules for how to hybrid. So I, I'm a, I like the idea of this hybriding. I've never actually done it past you know a couple characters made, but I I enjoy it because it gives it can give you a lot of flavor, a lot of room to do strange things because of your two classes that you pick. So move on to the epic destinies. This is where you begin to see the epic destinies that move closer to a more specialized role. We have the Diamond Soul, which is for monks. The God Mind is psionic powers. The Invincible Mind is only for battle minds. It's actually a really cool one. It's where 
you travel across the world just trying to find something that could kill you. It, so I think it's really cool. We get Master of the Eternal Hunt for the Seekers. The Rune Maker, which essentially gets up to the point where uh, you can never die as a... Because uh, you get so... You know, you can make the runes that the gods could make. So it's really cool. Like, their level 30 is... When you fail your third death saving throw during an encounter, you don't die. You instead vanish, appearing in your god's domain. All conditions and harmful effects on you and you are considered to have failed no death saving throws and you can spend a healing surge. As starting your next turn, you will reappear within 10 squares of the space you left. So, it's really, it's really cool. I mean, I have a little bit of problem with this immortality idea at level 30, but there are workarounds to it. I mean, take for example this one. No, you can't be killed by any normal means, but someone can still lock you in a concrete block. No, you'll never die per se, but you're going to be stuck in that turn that stone block for eternity. So you, you really do at level thirty get to this point where you are god. You have to think. You as a DM begin to have to think of creative ways to kill your players. You know, think to Greek mythology where they trap gods. So that, that's what you have to start doing. We get the War Master for the Ardent. And then we move on to the next section, which is where what they did. This is really cool, actually. Is they uh, offer ideas for your skills. Because you can take skills and you get utility powers. What they did is if you have training and a skill, you can now, instead of taking your class utility power, you can take a skill utility power, which can give you some really, really cool things. Let me, let me see if I can find one. There's one for history that's just really, really cool. Legend lore. You can make a history check in place of a knowledge check, which is pretty cool. Um, it's, it, it's, it's things like this that, uh, it they're very small, but they make a they make some sense like the one legend lore i think makes sense because if you can recall a story if you can recall the legend that you heard from the bard in the tavern you know when you were a small boy and you he, and you remember it and you now see this thing that was described to you you'd be like okay you know i remember that so it it really cuz i mean to put it in more modern terms if you were to see a werewolf you would, you know, we wouldn't know anything about a werewolf. However, you'd remember stories, you'd remember games, you'd remember, you know, everything like that, TV, everything. And then you'd be able to, like, okay, you know, I use silver. It, it's a kind of concept like that, and I think, it, I think it's pretty cool. Uh, I'm glad that they brought that in. We get your feats. Um, Paragon feats. We get new implements for all of the new pretty classes, new armors. See if there's anything else that's really, really new. Orbs. Honestly, when I look through these for you guys, I'm looking for wondrous items because I think those are some of the coolest. New, new, no new wondrous items, alas. More of their erratic type things at the back of the book. But that brings us to the end for the PHB three. It was brief. It was an overview, but. Honestly, that's really all you need because if any of those class ideas interested you, then you should go look at the mechanic system. But I'm personally of the mind that the idea of the class should draw you to it, not its game statistics. So, I think next week we'll be reviewing the Divine Powers book. So, until that time, have a good one.